Okay, we're live, bro. Finally live, man. What's going on, everybody? We are live. You might smart guy, Matt Zapala here, along with Lorenzo Salas. And for you guys that don't know, he's the man behind the camera. Yes, not this camera, though. Not this camera, not today. Not today. But he's the man behind all of our video vlogs, the Living Money Smart series, the uh, the new car series. This is the guy. Mm -hmm. So, good afternoon, everybody. Great to be with you. Adam, what's going on, stud? And so today we want to talk to you about a conversation that we have with a lot of entrepreneurs as we encourage them to build a monster business is that they always feel, well, that's it, maybe always, but a majority of the ones that we've been talking to lately feel that they need to have a lot of irons in the fire. They feel they need to have multiple streams of income when they're starting off as a new entrepreneur. Now, Lorenzo, that sounds pretty attractive, doesn't it? Multiple streams of income. Sure. You know, this, money here, money here. You got a book deal, got online marketing, consulting, coaching, membership, all those different things, man. So, hello, Tina. How you doing? Welcome to the conversation. So, I, I want to I know what you guys think. What do you think? Building multiple streams of income, not both building multiple streams of income? Let me know your thoughts. At the same time, let us know where you're watching us from, man. Are you watching us from the East Coast, West Coast? Um, we've uh, started building national reach from uh, coast to coast, East Coast, West Coast. Matter of fact, this morning I got uh, in, in a conversation with somebody from Puerto Rico, Lorenzo. Really? Yeah. You sure it wasn't my cousin? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we want to talk to you guys about the myth, busting the myth of multiple streams of income. And um, let me just get right to it. You know, I was talking to somebody and said, Matt, you know, I want to do um, social media marketing. I want to do online marketing. I want to do consulting, coaching, management, social media management. I'm like, what business do you do? What business, what business do you run, right? And so, so Tina's from, uh, what is that? Read it for me, bro. Oh, where's Tina from? Tina, uh, it passed, I, I don't know. Gotcha, so many comments are flat. Yeah. I think I think I saw Indiana. So I was going to have Tina from Indiana. And so, um, so anyway, back to this young entrepreneur, he felt like he had to do multiple things. You know, he goes, you know, I, I, got, uh, I got my foot in a job, but when I launch up into the business world, I want to have my, I want my feet or my, what do they say, irons in a lot of fire. Or they can't make a decision about their existing business because they have a, a lot of irons in the fire. So, what was some of the comments there? Was that, was that Ron? Uh, Ronica. What's up, man? What's up, Enzo? What's up? What's up, What's up man, Ronica? Ronica? Cool. So, let me, let, me, let me share with you this. What good is it to have multiple streams of income if each stream of income is a little trickle, right? It's a little trickle. You know, if, if you have five streams of income, but all five of them, all five of them bring you a dollar each, it's still five dollars, right? And so uh, Adam says, I tried it, it does not work. You must, uh, you must solidify your main business core first once your brand and business as solid as possible, it makes sense, but blah, 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 blah. So I want you guys to know that the only time I'm reading is when we're stopped. Because <laughs> somebody's gonna call me out out there, right? That's important. That's important. But, um, so th that, that's that's what I want to talk about. So you see a lot of businesses. Yeah. As a, as a videographer, producer, you, you deal with a lot of different businesses from, you know, multiple dips of uh, mom and pop, you've done reality shows, you've done documentaries. Um, what do you see out there in the business community when you're talking to business owners about incorporating video into the marketing. I think one of the first things I see when I when I encounter somebody who's interested in doing business or doing a video. Hello, BB. Hello, Keith. Hi, BB. Um, is that they're not really they're not really solid on their message, and a lot of times they're not telling me what what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. But I can see it. I can hear it in them. So they like the idea of doing a video. They like to the, the, they they fall in love with that concept. But when it really comes down to actually nailing down a core message, they don't have a core message. They're, they're not really solid on anything. So the core isn't solid. No. And so when it comes, you know, it's easy to talk about video and all that stuff. But then when you've actually got to put a check forward, 
and actually like come together on the table and actually put something together, then it becomes very real uh, how uh, uh, unorganized you are with your message yeah. and your business. And uh, and that quickly, and then before you know it, it the idea of video, uh, they're no longer interested. They can't do it because they, they realize they're missing something to the whole, the whole thing. Yep. Let me, let me put up the uh, deal here. So, so let, let, me, let, me share, let me share you guys an example. I, I, I attempted to do multiple streams of income. So uh, in the mid 2000s, I was uh, in a financial, I was a licensed advisor and I had my license um, in, in the financial services industry. I had a practice and then I started dabbling in real estate, right? Not, not as a realtor, but, but investing in real estate, right? I had the credit, I had the cash, started dabbling in that. And next thing you know, a guy tells you, hey Matt, you know, you need, you need this done for your business. What is it? He says, you need a website. And next thing I created a website and I realized that, man, I'm, I'm pretty good at creating websites. And so a lot of other advisors would come to me and say, Matt, how do you develop a website? How do, how do you develop an, an online presence? And then I started doing radio and TV. And then next thing you know, um, a lot of other advisors, a lot of people in the business world said, how do you get on radio and TV? And I created this thing called the iSmart system, the iSmart process. I created a, a, a niche consulting company in addition to my financial business at the same time. And iSmart stuff, internet, social media, article writing, radio and TV. Pretty cool marketing concept, right? And I'd, I'd create that concept, I'd sell it. I'd sell a $2,500 package, $5,000 package, $10,000 package. What happened to me and my partners in that, and it reduced the time and effort I had in my core business. And because it reduced the time and effort in my core business, it reduced the revenue. And I didn't even feel passionate about the other uh, stream of income anyway. I wasn't passionate about um, creating coaching and business consulting services for the iSmart process. I want to be in the grind. I want to be in the message. I don't want to be a consultant. That's not what I was born and set out to do. And um, you know, I've been approached by multiple publishers. Hey, Matt, you know, come out with a book deal. Yeah, I, I've been through. By the way, I've been through three publishers. I've been through three publishers to to develop another stream of income, which is writing a book. Had it worked out. As a matter of fact, I spent like five grand to buy my rights back to a book I didn't want to get published. And the publisher was forcing me to publish that book because I want to get I was haphazardly getting involved in a in the book industry, in the book business. Wow. Right? Yeah. Crazy, huh? Yeah. And so those were my efforts into a multiple stream of income. And it just keeps you, unless you're ready to scale, right? Unless you're ready to scale and, and keep that revenue stream going because you've hired someone to run your core business. And that core business still runs with the revenue and it pays for the additional expense you have to pay somebody's salary to run your core business. It doesn't make sense to have multiple streams of income. Right. And then, and then I, I would gather too on, on the video side of things, they're also leery on the investment of a video guy. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, I mean, the numbers can get can get quite high. Depend, you know, you come up with an idea and then you start realizing, oh, wait a minute, it's three days of shooting, four days, maybe five days of shooting. It gets quite expensive. Uh, and, and kind of piggybacking off of what you're saying, uh, you know, I, I really, I, you know, there was a time where I wanted to do an agency. I wanted to do all kinds of things, uh -huh. you know, offer this service, offer that service. And the reality is my first one wasn't really off to the point where I could let it go and let it run itself. Yeah. So that was a big indicator for me to just slow down, get really good at the process of, of what I do. And it's a lot of process in, in yeah. there. Yeah. And so that process is really solid. Then consider moving on to something. And, and if I do, it's complimentary. It's not something completely out of the left field. Mm -hmm. It has to be, it has to be within the same, same, uh, same arena. And, and I've realized too that if your multiple businesses require two things from you, if you have multiple businesses that require your time and your talent, man, you're you're gonna run into the wall, man. You're gonna run into the wall. Why? Because there's almost so much time you have. And there's almost some energy you have to express your talent. What's going on, Pablo? I'm gonna say Pat Jones also said hi. Oh yeah. What's up? Cool. Keith Brooks. Keith Brooks. What's going on, Keith? Keith is from Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta. But uh, what I want you guys to know is that if you are a new entrepreneur, 
And, and in my opinion, you've not cracked, let's say, half a million, seven fifty, and one million dollars mm -hmm. yet in revenue in your business. I'm talking about take home. I'm not talking about gross revenue. I'm talking about take home revenue. That you should stick with one business. Wow. One business. Why? Because as is the, the reality is back in the 1970s and 80s, all the publicly traded companies that were on the S&P 500, 70, 80 percent aren't even in business today. Isn't it crazy? Wow. 70, 80 percent of all the companies in the S&P 500 index aren't in business today in 2017. It's completely different companies. So if some of the biggest and baddest companies out there who are publicly traded can't sustain their business for 40, 50 years, what makes you think you can have multiple businesses and these guys show they can even establish one? And here's the thing too, if I am going to build generational wealth, that's what I, that's one of my biggest outcomes as an entrepreneur. I want to create generational wealth. I don't know about you, you want to create generational I want, wealth? I do. I want, I, want, I want my kids and my kids' kids and my kids' kids' kids, four or five generations deep to know who I am. Because as much as I'm buried in the ground, I am still cutting them checks while they're alive. <laughs> it's like 2117, 100 years from now. Great, 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 great grand, grandfather Matthew, great, great, great grandfather money smart guy that's still cutting them checks. Here's, here's another thing, here's another thing too. Think about, think about the Mississippi River. You want a stream of income? Build the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and the Mississippi River, think about this, as strong, as strong and wide as the Mississippi River is, because it's strong and wide and focused, guess what happens? It feeds, it feeds into what, 30, I think 30 or 40 different states. So it touches 30 to 40 different states. Wow, wow. Because it's so broad, wide, and, and brings mm -hmm. commerce, and brings business, provides travel, transportation, to many other businesses too as well. So what am I getting at? If you are a new entrepreneur, get your first stream of income down on, uh, get, get it down on point. Go, I like that, go wide. Right. Go wide, go deep in your first business. Yes, right. And then allow that first business to bring light and life to other businesses that you create. And those other businesses that you create are yours. Like you're like down the road, you'll be the the next investor in a, the, the Facebook of its time, the Snapchat of its time, the Uber of its time, the Google of its time. Imagine that. Why? Because you had the money and, and financial capital to invest in those other multiple businesses. So instead of trying to create multiple streams of income, you're just gonna say, you know what? I like that company. I like that company. Let me let me be, let me be an investor. I don't, you know, I don't know about you, but. It seems like when I, there there are certain people that I come across, and they all kind of have the same story. They've got a gazillion good ideas, and none of them come to fruition. Yep. None of them ever pan out. None of them are successful. And you go, you know, and, and after a while, you you don't even become valid anymore. People just look at you and go, oh, you're doing another thing, because you haven't stuck with the first one. You haven't pushed through to, to the first one until it got successful. And. Uh, that's kind of been my story up to this point. And then I and then I finally decided I'm honing in on, on, on media. I saw where, where video was going in 2009 on the internet. There was the capability of it. I said, I'm honing in on this thing. Yeah. And and uh, I was gonna make sure that, that I got good at it. Yeah. Got good at it to the point where I could I could make it a legit business. And it could pay me yeah. consistently. So let's take some questions. I know there's some questions popping. Okay, help me read some of the questions, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. Go why 10 states, okay. Um, so what are you teaching your children now about money? If, this is from Dan, uh, Danielle Tula, Daniel Tula. So what am I teaching my kids right now about money? Here's, here's the thing is I'm teaching my kids about money. I said, kids, listen, mommy and, mommy and daddy have money, you're broke. Mommy and daddy had to work for everything that we earned, you're broke. Now here's the thing, being broke is a temporary situation. You're gonna be, be, you're gonna be around, people at your rich high school and people are driving around BMWs and they're gonna have iPads and iPhones I just want you to know there's two ways we can approach this either a you can feel like you deserve it and for the rest of your life you're gonna feel that the world owes you something or B you can go out and work for it and feel 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 pride that you earned something there's pride in your work there's pride in your grades there's pride in raising money so therefore you can buy an iPhone that you can buy Jordan's with your own money because here's what I know, 
when you get things with your own money, you value it. How do I know? Christmas. Christmas is is a parent's uh, greatest dilemma because they buy all these gifts for the for the children, and they wrap it. They take time to go shopping. They go to work to buy the money to do all that. And next thing you know, three four days after Christmas, and you buy them all these toys. What happens to all the toys? The toys are all over the place. And then you're mad at your kids. And then you're mad at your kids, man. Yep. Nice song. I like that, man. That's solid. That's it. That's it, bro. <laughs> How you doing, man? Man, that's a good song to play it out there, man. How, how you guys know that song? Crushing it. Reggae, reggae, reggaeton out here in Oak Brook, baby. Reggaeton in Oak Brook. I love it. Keep cranking it up, man. <laughs> of course, man. I'd be playing that right now if I wasn't live streaming. <laughs> so, uh, next question is: If they will be set with, if they will be set, what should they know about money? If they are going to be set, okay. So, in my trust, in my will, they know if they don't become productive citizens. Like my job is to give them a last name. Like my father, even though we came here with nothing from the Philippines, my father gave me a good, good, good name. Why? Because it's a name that stands for something that has integrity. That when my father's around his friends and family, he's respected. Because when he says he's going to do something, he follows through. And every time I go around my, 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 my parents' family, or my parents' friends, they say, whose son are you? I said, I'm Dell's son. He says, oh, good guy. So he gave me a good name. Now, I'm giving my kids that good name. I hope. <laughs> right? I hope. And so, what, what I want them to know is that even though I may be giving them an inheritance, a financial inheritance, which is something nobody in their family has ever done, I want them to know they got to work for it. I want to know that they got to be productive citizens. So in my trust, our lawyer said at 25 years old, they sit down with our trustee and they say if they don't do, if they're not gainfully employed or have a business or in school, they get no money. And they got to wait till they're 30 to, re to revisit it. In the meantime, the trust keeps reinvesting the money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? At 30 years old, if they don't have any uh, job or current business and they're not and or not in school, they don't get any money at 30 years old either. So that's that's kind of like the whole thing. Listen, everything about money you have to work for, because I'm a capitalist, I'm an entrepreneur, right? And here's here's the thing with my trust: the kids know the rules, no politics. So if you do the work, you'll get rewarded. You get rewarded, and you reinvest in other things. What, what are they going to teach their kids? They're, 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 they're going to do the same thing. Thank you, Vero. Hey, Vero, I know you like it. I get on, huh? Vero, Vero. <laughs> That's awesome. They're jamming. Yeah, they're, they're jamming, man. Were they even Puerto Rican? I, I don't think so. Yeah, they're Mexican or something like that. Yeah, okay. That's it. That's it. It's all good. But yeah, you know, I want I want I want my kids to know too that, that like there's no pressure. Like I'm not putting any pressure on my kids to say to say uh, you got to be this. Like 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 if you haven't watched Joe Coy's uh, life life from Seattle yet, he's Filipino and. Uh, like I'm not trying to tell my kids you got to be a you have to be a certain profession. What I'm telling my kids is that listen, whatever you do, be passionate about it, get behind it, work your ass off in that industry, work your ass off in that business, make a name for yourself. Yeah, my name may get may open doors for you, hopefully, but it's your name that's gonna put the stamp on it. That your name is gonna be the actual reputation people go off, not mine. And so, if you're going to put yourself in a position of, uh, of 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 growing a business or growing a growing a career and being that guy or that gal in that industry or that or that or that business, just be known that that you're the jam at it, that you you're trusted, and that you're dependable. You know, talking about kids, it's the culture you set at home. You know, I mean, we're not rolling in dough right now, <laughs> but there's an understanding of money. And and they their, their persp perspective on money is way different than somebody else who doesn't have that culture. Yeah. So you can start right now. It doesn't matter where you're at, yeah. whether you've got a lot of money or not. You build that culture in your family and your friends around you. You surround yourself, like being at the Money Smart meetings, yeah. and and you begin. It begins to infiltrate everything you do, all your decisions. So now you're not buying your Jordans unless you got enough money to justify that. Yeah, for you're example, investing in the business. Like like I t like I've always told the kids. And they're like, Poppy, Poppy, we want this, we want that, we want this. Great. What are you going to do to work for it? 
I don't. What I don't say is we don't have the money for it. We can't afford it. Where do you think we're going to get the money to buy that? How are we going to live there? We're, 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 we can we can barely survive. Mm. Like I don't I don't feed those words into my kids. Mm. What I feed into my kids is well, how are we going to do it? Because it creates. We we're just talking about earlier uh, a better quality questions. That's right. That's it. Don't just give them an out to say, well, we, we never lived there, so don't worry about it. No, how we're going to do it. Ask those how. Think, you know, yeah. come up with some ideas. Is there more questions, bro? Yeah. Yeah. I, think, see I, I see some questions popping up, man. Let's see here. Uh, right. Nabil, work for that legacy. Make the family work My for man, it. My man, Nabil. Ava, yep. Uh, Priscilla, what's your philosophy on building family wealth? And Giovanni, what tips do you have on being consistent? in business yeah so bi building family wealth in, in my opinion is really four different things is built is building wealth obviously financially but build so that's one that's one category the second category is how do I build wealth from a human perspective relationships traditions that's another area third one is intellectual what type of lessons from experience can we learn from each other mm -hmm. what kind of uh, degrees and certifications can we earn collectively as a family and then we can share knowledge with one another so that the first wealth is financial. Second wealth is human and relationships and traditions. Third, third is uh, intellectual. That's and huge. fourth, and fourth, fam, fourth phase of family wealth is contribution. What am I giving back? So when when we talk to the kids about our manifesto, mm -hmm. about what does our last name stand for? Those are four different categories. And and here's the thing: 80, 90 percent, 95 percent of all my competitors that have financial firms or in the insurance industry they only focus on one category, and that's money. Mm. <laughs> so to me family wealth is more than just money those would be my four categories and what was the, the second question um the second question was let me get out of here be more um, consistent in business uh what tips do you have on being consistent in business that's right Consi oh, giovanni. yeah so consistency in business like like giovanni like like i, I see you brother you're, you're a good looking guy i think you play football i think you're a champion in high school because i think you're sharing me your, your ring um so I would say the way you, you are consistent in business is the same way you be consistent in any aspect of your life. If you want to be consistent in sports, guess what you had to do every day? Practice. You had to lift weights. You had to eat right. You had to study your playbook. You had to review game tape. If you want to be consistent in your faith, you got to pray. You got to be accountable. You got to be open and honest. You got to understand where you fall short. You want to be consistent in your business. You got to be consistent in things that uh, uh, generate revenue, marketing, video, uh, and have people around you that remind you things that you know that you're easy to forget. At. Like I love my, I love my staff because uh, Karen Puebli, uh, Veronica, they help Sheena and I remember things that we know we easily forget. <laughs> right? That's why I go through Puebli now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you asked me, hey Matt, what what should our next vlog be? And I love bouncing things off of him because he sees a picture out from the outside. I see the picture of when I'm in inside because I'm in, I'm inside the frame. Yeah, I want some coffee, bro. We get some coffee. Yeah, we'll do it. We're just driving around Oprah right now, man. I guess I'll get some coffee. You gotta be excited about your life. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you do. You gotta be excited about it, and and that's what makes me consistent. Yeah. What makes me consistent about my business is because I know there's a lot of things to do, and what I focus on are the things that give me energy, that I'm excited about, that, that I'm passionate about, and obviously that creates revenue. Right, that that's the lifeblood of your business, Giovanni. You've got to create, you got to focus on that stream. That's like the Mississippi freaking river. That's gonna bring light and life into your into your community, into your financial home. You got to focus on it. One thing until you crack that stream open. Don't focus on anything else. Don't get distracted by anything else, but making that one thing work. We'll do one last question, man, before we get some caffeine. This, this is an interesting one. Good this question. is from Alicia. Okay. She says, how do you handle jealousy and envy from others in the office? Listen, you're not doing anything right unless you have jealousy and envy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you are, uh, a couple of things. True. You are winners and champions and competitors are going to create jealousy and envy from everybody else. They're going to wish they can speak as well as you. <coughs> they can be as talented as you talented as you that they, they're gonna wish that they um, uh, had the family situation that you have whatever the case but there's always, there, people are always gonna find an excuse why they, they're not succeeding 
oh, people are always going to find excuses why, why, why they're not succeeding, and they're going to say instead of me, me taking ownership of me not succeeding, I'm just going to ping that off to of somebody else. Mm. That's not taking responsibility of your business, by the way. You you get ahead in your business by taking 100% responsibility of your business, of your financial future, of your decisions, 100%. If you fail, it's on you. If you win, it's on you. And in the meantime, you are going to create jealousy and envy. You're going to create a lot of people who say, man, I wish I had their, I wish I had a nanny just like them. Listen, long before we had a nanny, we had a babysitter come on Tuesday and Saturday before we, before we were able to get that financial revenue to afford a full-time nanny. Now Sheena is a lot uh, 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 brighter, uh, brighter mode. Um, I'm in a much more uh, 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 brighter mode, um, uh, much more gooder mood. Yeah. Gooder, that's a good <laughs> I'm, word. I'm in a gooder mood. That's a good word. And so, so, you know, uh, at the same time, if if you're not creating jealousy and envy, then you're not doing anything. Ooh. Yeah, we talked about that, right? Yeah, you're just kind of average need, and ordinary. We need more ha more haters on the vlog. Yeah, I, yes, please. I want more haters on my YouTube channel. I want more haters here uh, uh, trolling me here in comments. That means I'm doing something. That's right. Right? I want, that means I'm doing something. So, uh, but listen, operate from everything from the right heart, the right spirit, the right mindset, that you're out there to serve, that you're out there to help, that you're out there to solve problems. And I think that two things are going to happen in your marketing. Two things are going to happen in your business as you build this stream is A, you're going to naturally repel people from you. It's kind of, kind of uh, opposite of what people are thinking, right? So, you, you, because of your decision going business to build that one stream of income, you're going to naturally repel people and things and circumstances away from you. And they're probably going to talk bad about you. They're probably going to troll you. Do, do other things. But here's the second part: you're going to naturally attract people, mm -hmm. circumstances, and opportunities your way because you're making room for the things that are good. Mm -hmm. So just have trust and faith in that and focus on what? One thing. Focus on the one thing that you know is gonna take you to the promised land. Don't get distracted by the different shiny objects. You just focus on that one thing that's gonna take you to zero to hero, A to B, scratch the success, zero to hero. You focus on that one thing until, until you're at 500,000, 750 million dollars in cash flow then you can look at starting investing in other things, right? And by the way, by the time you get to half a million dollars in cash flow, seven fifty million dollars a year, you're, you you've established so much fun in what you're currently doing. You don't want to get folk, you know distracted and focused. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking later on, somebody gave me fifty million dollars. They did what would I do with it? Yeah, I'm talking about creating a, a media company and all that. But you know what? I'm still be doing. I still be building a team. I still be a co-owner of PHP agency. I still be transforming people's lives. You know why? Because I remember where I come from, and some guy gave me a shot. Some guy gave you a shot. Some people gave a shot to the people to, to, to the left and to the right of me. And they deserve a shot. And if I'm not there leading the charge, I can always delegate making a movie to somebody else. Yeah. But we create the story. Because before you get the glory, you got to create the story. Mm. And I want you to create that story. And I want you to tell the story. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. Lo, appreciate you, man. And I appreciate you guys. For tuning in, Irving. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Irving. He's from uh, Florida, man. Nice. Yeah, Irving. He just came on board uh, from uh, World Financial Group, and um, he's about to do some big things, man. Welcome aboard, brother. I'm glad you're here at PHP Agency and in our Mastermind Group. And in, in, um, Florida's in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with that being said, guys, make sure you, if you like this video, please share it. Please like it. Please comment it. If you're watching this also on YouTube. Make sure you, boom, boom, subscribe to our channel. Make sure if you're watching this on Facebook, you, boom, boom, like our page. Too. And by the way, don't miss tomorrow's episode. Episode four. Four. Episode four of the vlog. Four. This is Lorenzo Salas. He's the producer. He's the creator. He's the man behind the camera. He's doing it all, telling our story. Yes. All right? Yes. That being said, guys, till we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. today. God bless you guys. Have a great week.